Hello, this is Dustin with Home Mender, and today we're going to be doing the dreaded tearing out tile halfway up the wall. Tile halfway up the wall is terrible. It's like from the 50s. And if we work together, we can stamp out tile halfway up the wall, but you gotta do your part. I'm gonna show you how. Let's get to it. First thing we need to do is, is turn the water off to the vanity. You can see the, the hot side and the cold side over there. And we're gonna need to disconnect the drain. So we're gonna valve off the water. Go ahead and close it till it's hand tight. Now we can test it turning on the faucet. Slow trickle, snug it down a little bit. Now I can use my channel locks to disconnect my supply lines. Long-winded son of a gun. Go ahead and loosen the nuts on them and pull the supply hoses out of the cutoff. Now you can disconnect the trap. Nice and gentle so we don't snap anything off. And we might want to grab a bucket for underneath. Now this water is going to be gross so don't spill it on yourself. Now with our lines disconnected, we're ready to pull the top. Now we're ready to free up the top from the wall. Go ahead and cut the caulk line and then see if there's anything else. Maybe it's caulk to the cabinet. After the caulk is cut, you can lift off. And it's lifting the whole vanity. Still not coming up. Now these usually can be caulked down or liquid nail. So you might be dealing with that. I'm gonna take a pry bar and try to get under the corner without snapping it. Lift. You try to walk it down. Didn't crack? Yeah, it's really uh, liquid nailed. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and try to continue to pull it. Again, we're not saving our top. If you are saving your top, you might wanna try it a little different. But we're gonna try to get it out without cracking it. Okay, that didn't happen. Couple Phillips screws holding it in place. So now we're ready to take the tile out. Not an easy task, but we're gonna do the best we can and try to get it off the wall without damaging the wall. That's the big thing. I would like to go with wainscoting over this, so we gotta get the tile off and not really do a lot of damage to it. I'm gonna try to use like a six in one painter's tool to pop the tile off. Now remember, we are changing our floor. If you're not changing your floor, you may wanna protect it with a drop cloth. So good news is it's not really tearing up the wall that bad, but it is gonna take me a long time to do it. It looks like if I can get behind here, I can just go straight down and cut the wall out like that. If you don't wanna remove the tile like this, you can always use a Sawzall and cut the wall out, pull the whole wall and tile out, and then re-drywall it. I think that one's gonna be messy, so I'm just gonna pick it off since we're just going with Wayne's coating right over it. I'm trying to eliminate work for myself. I like the hammer way better.
Alright, so after you get all the main tile off, I'm not going to lie, that was no picnic. We can take a paint scraper and just scrape off anything that's protruding, any humps. I got some glue here. And we're just going to go through and get that stuff off so we have a, a nice flat surface to lay to. Alright, after your surface is cleaned up, we're going to need to decide which way to run this. Now I have two doors in my bathroom, so it's a little weird here. I've got another door here. But I know uh, this is the first thing I see right here when I come in, so I definitely want to start with a four foot panel going this way and four foot panel going that way. That way when I step into the room, it's just, it's got the most appealing view that I could possibly give the walls. Now I'm going to be using four by eight sheets of wainscoting paneling. Now true wainscoting is the kind that the boards like they lock into each other and you stack them on the wall that way. However, they only come out about 36 or 38 inches. Now my tile is 49 inches to my ugly paint line. So I need that 48 inch height to get up there and then my chair rail that we're gonna cap it with is gonna cover the ugly. I'm also gonna go through and mark my studs. I have a plate at the bottom so I can, I can tack my panel in at the bottom. But all through here, I'm going to need the studs. I'm just going to be securing them with little finishing nails and paneling adhesive. So we're going to need to know where the stud is. All right, my sheets are four feet by eight feet. And I know that I need at least four feet here. So I'm going to cut these at 48 so I can get two pieces out of one panel. You also definitely want to break them on a stud. I'm gonna start with a 40 and a half. Ah yes, coming out into the sun to cut this. I know my height is 48, so I'm gonna cut this eight foot sheet in half. I'm gonna mark it at 48, 48, straight edge. And I'm gonna cut it upside down with the skill saw. That way the finish on the other side is gonna be a little prettier. Now I'm also gonna set my saw blade depth to about a quarter inch. I don't need more blade than the thickness of the panel. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to measure 40 and a half from the left side where I want my seam. But again, we're going to mark it on the back so I can get a nice cut. 40 and a half. All right, so I cut my board to break right there at my 40 and a half, but you'll notice on this paneling, the pattern is the skinny bead and then a panel. And the other end ends with the bead. So you're, you've got to butt those to each other, the bead to the full panel, and that way it looks like a continuous pattern. So make sure when you're cutting, you allow for that. Double check. I've got my liquid nail paneling adhesive, and I'm just going to do four stripes two close to the edges, and then two in the middle. And I think I'm gonna do one, a little one across the top too. Just to make sure it's stuck down well. Cut side goes into the corner, factory side is gonna be the seam. Now I'm gonna tack these in with finishing nails. The fewer nails, the better. But let's make sure we get our seam nailed off good. The nails at the very top and the very bottom are gonna be covered by base and chair rail. Now you can do the poke test, see if you've got any air behind it. If not, you're good to go. All right, dry fit your next piece. Make sure your seam's line up well. And don't worry about the height difference. because that's not gonna be a problem. You can use your pry bar to pry it over, get you a tight seam. Now I like cutting big panels and stuff like that on the grass. It just makes it easier. You don't have to lug saw horses. And if you set your saw blade depth, you don't have to cut into the grass. You could just cut right there and it makes it pretty sweet. Also another trick with these guys 
adhesives of like this are pretty bad. You don't wanna like touch anything or like you certainly don't wanna use your caulk poker to poke in here. I like to use a stick. I also like to cut the panel tip pretty fat so I can get a nice fat stream of glue. Now this one here, I didn't have to worry about my bead. I just, because it's under four foot, it's gonna go wall to casing here. But I do have this little rip to contend with. I've got this little three quarter inch rip cut for that, but because it would be such a pain to get in there and nail it, I'm gonna put this in first and then butt this corner to it to help hold it in. The dry fit is good to go. Let's get it secured. All right, so here we are with our last wall. Of course, it's a wall with the plumbing in it. Um, I got lucky here my, from this corner that my stud breaks right at a four foot mark. So I'm gonna start with a full board in this corner, which is gonna be sweet. Now, depending on what kind of sink you're going with, see, I'm going with a vanity, so more than likely it's gonna be covered anyway, but I'm still gonna try to do somewhat of a neat job. I don't want to, you know, I cut a giant hole so we're gonna do the best we can. Maybe you have a pedestal sink or, or something like that that you wanna, you still need to cut your wall pretty tight. So we're gonna do what we can there. So we loosen the slip joint nut and pull out the wall bin. Put that in the bucket. Now this scutcheon here already has a break in it. So I can remove that. It looks somebody, like somebody's made these. They do sell scutcheons that come apart, like they open up and then you can close them behind it four walls like this, but they've already got one cut, so we're gonna go ahead and do that with our other one and see if we can reuse it. It is under a vanity, so it only has to look so good. We can also pull off the cutoff handles. Now that's gonna make for a much smaller hole that we need to drill. It's gonna measure up to the center of the pipe. 18 and a quarter, you really need to get down on it to get an accurate measurement. I got 18 and a quarter on the middle pipe, 21 and 21 on the other, and now over from the corner, we've got 20 and a half, 24 and an eight, 28 and a half. So I'm gonna mark those X's and then I'm gonna draw holes. This only needs to be about one inch wide hole, and this needs to be about two inch. These one inch holes do not look big enough. As you can see, my hole did not work out so well, so I had to do a little trimming with the multi-tool. All right, so this panel is in. I've got one more to go. You can see that my wall is pretty out of square here. Of uh, well, I'm gonna need to do some scribe molding or something to button that up. And you can see my last board worked out pretty good. Actually, I think I want to go ahead and cut like an upside down U shape in it and slide the panel over top of it because the scutcheon's gonna cover it and then the baseboard's gonna come up and it's just gonna hide it pretty well. All right, so when you're doing chair rail, we're going to cut it to fit. Obviously, it's gonna just gonna cap over the ugly line. So with something like this, we're gonna have to put in a little piece. Otherwise, it's gonna look funny if it's naked. And then this piece is gonna fit over top of it. Like so. Level. And you could caulk the corner and the door jam. You always want to wipe the caulk off with your finger, get it in all the cracks. Something little like that, I'm not going to shoot it because shooting it's probably going to break it. So I'm going to get off all the excess caulk underneath to the corner. Take the excess off with your finger and then you can use clean the sponge and then wipe it down with the sponge and it'll give it a nice smooth, doesn't look like you used your fingers finish.
Awesome. All right, here's how to do the corners. Now, one of the sides you're gonna make straight. This is a five inch, I'm gonna cut both ends straight because one's gonna butt to the door and the other one is gonna butt to the wall. But this piece, I'm gonna 45 to the inside, one end, and then we're gonna cope it so it can lay over top of that corner. All right, this dude's cutting his lawn, so I gotta work fast. I'm gonna cut my five inch at straight sides and then we'll 45 our 61. Now we cut our 61. And I'm gonna 45 it towards my inside. It's the left side of my panel cap, so I'm gonna cut it to the inside from the left. Now I'm gonna use a coping saw and cut the shape out that the 45 made on this board, and I'm gonna try to apply some back cut to it so it lays over there nice and nothing is in the way. You could also do an inside 45 cut. Both pieces cut to the inside. And a nice caulk line takes care of it. Now I have a shelf going right over top, so I'm not gonna worry about coping this corner. And don't forget to caulk your seams. Now you cut your base in you're good to go. I'm not gonna put my base down yet because we're gonna do the floor in here first, but then shoot the base down. But now that you've done your chair rail, you know how to do your base. So that's it. We just rocked that bathroom, tore out the tile halfway up the wall, put some wainscoting, and now you've rocketed this bathroom into this century. This house is in a beach town, so it is socially acceptable to do wainscoting. If you live in the mountains or in the desert, it may be another story. So for the home vendor, I'm Dustin. I hope you learned something today. And if you did, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.